Um, the other day I was talking about lead screw and I was saying how you could use your lead screw combinations or possibly moving your uh, compound so that you could get multi-start threads. People didn't understand multi-start threads. I, I was figuring everyone would, but it's where your thread starts in multiple places and they wind around each other. So you have multiple thread paths. Here I've drawn four of them starting. And <clears throat> if you want to look at that at home, you can see that uh, on your normal water or milk jug, now this one here has three starts. I blocked them out and they just didn't want you to have to turn the the uh, cap so many times to get it on and off, but still give it some strength by having extra ridges. So there's some things you'll see that on. <clears throat> now, when it comes to cutting a, uh, cutting a thread, it could be because it's multi-lead that you've got an extremely high, uh, high lead to it. The lead is a lot, which would be a low pitch. So your pitch, like if you have a pitch of one quarter of an inch, you have a lead or the distance that a thread moves forward of, I started that all wrong. <laughs> I'm starting to go valves open, valve closed, <laughs> you know, tight, loose. Okay. Okay. We're going to talk about lead angle. Now on a lead angle, it is the angle with relation to, you can see here where we've drawn this, I have a a bit of an angle here in relation to the imaginary threads. And this one was a four start thread. Um, so how do we figure out that angle? And why do we want to figure out that angle? The reason we want to figure out that angle is if we're going to cut this kind of a thread, we need to know how much extra clearance to leave on our tool. Because if our tool is just cut with a regular five degree clearance and we're trying to smoosh it over this quick, it's not going to cut. It's going to need more clearance on the one side of the cutting tool. You don't have to clearance the second side, but this one that's being forced forward, you're going to need more clearance and you want to know what that amount is. Most normal threads that are uh, normal bolt threads, common ones are not going to be a problem because they're relatively shallow. Now, um, something else to mention is as you get, because this angle is formed, both by your movement forward, which is pi times the diameter. And generally they figure it at the uh, pitch diameter, but in reality, you've got three different angles you can think of. You can think of the minor diameter, the pitch diameter, and the outside diameter. They're all gonna be slightly different. It's not that critical. I just grab the outside diameter normally when I'm figuring it, because I'm lazy and it's easier. Um, the difference, if you needed to figure them, you could figure each one separately and just use the diameter that you want to. If you want to find them, if you had something that was really clear, critical for clearance, you wanted to not break tools any more than you had to have the maximum strength, then you can go ahead and figure the inside diameter. That's going to be the steepest angle. Uh, normally, like I say, they figure the pitch diameter because it's an average and that's what you'll find in books if you're looking this stuff up, but that's not the one that is the, the uh, biggest change to you as far as what you'd need to know. Um, when you have a smaller diameter, it is less of an angle than, I mean, more of an angle, more of an angle. If this one here is traveling around uh, <clears throat> this is say we had the thread coming forward one inch, it's going to be very steep. Where this one here, if it moves forward one inch, it's just going to have this much of an angle approximately. Now, to figure out that angle, first off, we need to know what the lead is. So if your thread pitch is one quarter, um, I don't have one quarter on here. Okay, if it's four threads per inch your lead, the amount it goes forward is going to be one quarter of an inch. Every time you turn it around, it goes forward one thread distance, one quarter of an inch. So your formula to get your lead is lead equals one divided by your threads per inch. So if it was, as I say, four threads per inch, it would be a lead of one quarter. In my case of doing the one where I was talking about doing those uh, water cooling and lubricating grooves years ago, it was about a three inch diameter and I had a 
one fifth of a thread per inch. And so, or what I was working with there was figuring the lead directly more, which was the five. So that actually worked out to be 31 degrees. So when I cut the tool for that, I cut the tool actually at about 40 degrees on this side, but I also, for a little more strength, because it was moving away from this part as it cut, this one here didn't need a clearance angle that you would normally think of as cutting straight up because it wasn't cutting straight up. It was moving at a very quick angle. So actually the following angle of the tool came back here. While I move this one over 40 degrees, I can move this one over 30 degrees and still have good clearance because it's continually moving away. Um, and here is the formula. Either use your inverse tangent or tangent to the minus one, something like that you'll have on your scientific calculator. And that's your lead divided by your diameter times pi. So that all you've really got, you're just, this is just a tangent function. We are looking at the side opposite on this is the movement, the amount of lead. And then our side adjacent to our angle is the distance around, which is your diameter times pi. It's relatively simple. And like I say, in that one, I had 31 degrees. You can see this one here, the one I was talking about the other day, I had a little over a one inch shaft in there that I was pointing at, but talking about doing a four lead with one inch per revolution thread. And that would have been pretty close to 20 degrees. And I hadn't really thought about how steep that angle would have been. Somebody in the comments was saying, how do you figure this, you know, figure this out? What would the uh, clearance angle need to be? And I got, as I got to figuring it out, yeah, it actually would be quite a little bit on that small of a shaft. Normally you don't make them on that small of a shaft, but uh, yeah, it would have been pretty st steep. And if you needed to, you could. These are our normal 1 inch 8, 1 inch 12, 1 inch 14 are normal threads. And as you can see, you're only looking at two and a half degrees on the extreme. And normally you'll have five or six, maybe 10 degrees of clearance already on it. So you just don't even think about it. You just go over and thread it. And then as a comparison, I did a four inch with one thread per inch. Well, that's only five degrees and a four inch eight is 0 0.6, 412 and 414, there was a slight difference, but they both rounded out to 0.4. And uh, so you could see again how the larger diameter gives you a lesser angle to have to worry about for your cut. And anyway, that's a little bit of stuff there.